This is Ram Newbury, teaching you how to learn a pain faster. Welcome everyone, I'm going to show you a few things I learned from Edgar Payne. Time spent making master copies and never time wasted. So let me show you just a few things that I learned. This is one of the books to have in any artist's collection. This one's a 7th edition. There is so much here you can learn along with quality reproductions of his art. But I wanted to show you some of his method. I learned a lot more from copying by following his process, really understanding uh, his method. Understanding how they did it will also help save a lot of frustration. Uh, maybe you're painting along and you're not quite sure why you're not getting the same results. Well, a lot of these artists painted a hell of a lot bigger. Edgar Payne used to paint on a much larger scale. One of the biggest lessons with painting over long distances, you can see the effects of atmospheric perspective. And you can see this very clearly in his artwork. You can see the effects of atmospheric perspective and how he used it in his art. A clear sunny day is a great opportunity to see how over distance it affects value and color. This is due to how much atmosphere you're looking through. And gradually as the distance recedes, it's first the yellows that disappear, which is the sunlight, then the reds until you're left with the blue. You can see in the foreground of this copy, there's much more yellow than in the distance. This is not always the case, because there are many different atmospheric conditions that determine what you see. In this painting, Edward Payne employed more of a kind of a greyed out effect, very much like you would see in a misty environment. This brought all the greys together in a subtle play of colour in the mountain. The fewer the colours, the more easily they're controlled. Now there are so many palettes out there and you should try as many as you can, but I recommend this one as it was incredibly effective and very rewarding. Uh, this one uses all pure colours and takes full advantage of the spectrum of colour. Now the colours shown are the ones listed in Composition of Outdoor Painting. If you want to get these colours, because this book was written 100 years ago, check out Old Holland for the colour types. They've been around since 1664 and I think they'll be the closest to those colours. Now I would have loved to get those but I'm broke so I've got Winton instead. Never used these before and I always recommend getting the best paint you can afford. Now we'll just watch out for this, not all brands will display the exact colour on the outside. I was stupid, I didn't read. This is in fact a Lizarin Crimson. I was going for a more pure colour like Cadmium Red. I swapped out for this Georgian colour Scarlet Red which is close enough. Now the good advantage of Winton is that it's cheap. Don't be disheartened if you have this lower quality paint. I must admit I was not expecting much from Winton but I was surprised. Uh, you can still paint and if you're on a budget you can afford anything else Winton will work. It's not to say that there won't be difficulty especially when it comes to mixing the colours. Uh, sometimes you might not be able to reach the colours that you're after and it will take a lot more paint to mix up but it's not impossible and it works. I mean I did these paintings and I felt they turned out okay. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something and in upcoming episodes I'm going to show you a simple way to mix paint.